guys, it's Tim back again. And my, oh my, jelly papers are everywhere. Jelly, jelly, jelly. I've been doing a lot of jelly prints. You may have caught some of them on Periscope. Um, so what do we do with these jelly prints? So what I'm going to do is take some of the jelly prints that I've created on um, regular cardstock. This is regular um, get it at the Office Depot, um, Staples, cardstock. I believe it's 120 pounds, just your regular 8 by 8 and a half by 11. Um, and I'm going to use this. Unfortunately, sometimes with the jelly plate, you get the little white edge border around the uh, plate where the plate is. So my plate's 8 by 10, so I still have a little bit of a gap that I will often have on the project. So what I'm doing is just using some complementary colors that I have here in acrylic and my paintbrush to go around and just make it blend in a little better uh, with the rest of the page so that you don't have such a stark um, border around. These are going to end up being fun little mail art pieces to mail. You can turn them into postcards, really just about anything, but today we're going to use these to make envelopes. And again, just using a complementary color. Then I thought, well, why not take my small jelly plate, which is the 3 by 5 and put a little bit of uh, paint on it and use it uh, to kind of do the plop and pat method. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, I'll make sure to link right above here the uh, video where I show you um, to how to do some jelly, jelly prints. So I'm using a stencil here just to create the little border around it. Make sure it's a little bit easier and blends into the background. And just scraping up every little bit of paint I can because uh, there's no wasting going on here. Even the paint that's used on the newsprint on the uh, background will be used at some point in a journal page or a project. So here I decided that I would go in with some white. Um, and this is just your cheap acrylic craft paint. Nothing expensive. And I'm using a brayer. And I'm just going to brayer over it. Because the background was a little dark. Um, and so I, I figured, hey, why not? Let's try it out. That's what you have to do. Is just experiment and explore and see what you like. Just going to use the paint that's left on that stencil to go around and kind of bring out some pops of white with that. And I typically always use multiple, um, I do multiple things at one time because who has time to wait on paint to dry? So work on uh, different projects at the same time. I mean, if you're like me, you probably have a whole stack of backgrounds and uh, jelly prints that you could use anyway. So. Here I'm going in with the most fabulous, yes, fabulous paint. If you've watched uh, any of my periscopes, you've probably seen me rage about Deco Arts um, patio paint in the neon pink. It is a beautiful color, and usually my go-to when it comes to hot pink. No, make that always my go-to when it comes to hot pink. And working back and forth just until you get the background the way you like it. So, here I'm going to do one more. And I'm going to take a new color. This is the um, Dina Wakely, I think, um, paints there. And I'm using those. So much fun. Alright, and I'm thinking what else do I want to do here. I 
I'm going to break out the yellow dilutions paint. I'm using a dry brush here, taking most of the paint off and leaving just a little bit. But the uh, yellow is a nice um, color that kind of makes the other colors pop. So it's like across the color wheel. So it, it would be a complementary or contrasting color to that. And I'm like, hey, why do you have the paint out, Tiff? Might as well use what you got on the brush for something else. Because I don't like wasting. And here, I'm not really sure what I'm doing over there. What am I doing? Oh, I'm just showing you the three pages that I've uh, worked on. And now we're going to fold them in half. Take that uh, 8 by 10 or 8 and a half by 11 a uh, piece of cardstock, zooming in a little closer, and I'm using my Stabilo all just to make a few different marks. Um, the Stabilo is going to be a nice contrast against um, such a bright background, and uh, a little bit of interest there. And then, even though it's going to be on the back side, I want to make sure the envelope is pretty, so I'm going to put some uh, marks on the back side of here as well. I noticed that I fell off frame just a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to be using a background stamp. This is by Las Vegas Stamp Company. Viva Las Vegas Stamp Company, I believe. And I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, just a nice little textured background with that. You can use any stamp, really. And now I'm going to take a piece of old uh, paper that I've had. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of jelly print on the um, on the corner of it there. And I'm going to add a little arrow on there. And so I just freehanded that. And that arrow is actually going to house the address to the recipient. So don't feel like you have to do just a square um, address label. Make something fun. So be creative. You could put a little house and you could put the address in there. You could do a flower and put an address in there. You could do all different kinds of shapes and um, I'm just going to go back with a little paint um, because it was easy and I had it right there with me. But just a little bit of paint to mute out the background of the text and allow you to be able to see the um, the numbers in the address make it a little easier and now we're flipping back over to that uh, purpley uh, pink one we were working with and I've decided to use a stencil here um, I believe it is a Tracy Bautista um, stencil I'm pretty sure and I will link that below as well if you're interested in it and I'm going to use two colors of dilutions no not dilutions paints this is a uh, um, Dina Wakely paints, I think. Still by Ranger, you know what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to use those two colors along with the little sponge just to give it some interest um, and color variation in the petals. Because if you go out and look, you can notice that most uh, flowers um, have variation in color when the light hits it and, uh, you know, depending on if the buds are older. So. And I, as you can see, I put that in the corner and then went back with my finger in the dilutions um, paint there. And ta-da! Beautiful. I chose the colors of the purple because it was a nice contrasting color. There again, if you look on the color wheel, you'll know, notice that those are complementary colors. They pop very nicely off of the background. Um, and... Are really uh, I forgot to do the center there so I'm trying to figure out where was I going with that um, but nice little uh, addition at the pop of the purple there and I'm gonna put one more little petal on the corner just to kind of uh, round it out going back with the yellow as well and ta-da I like that a lot and I fold it up just to see make sure I know where the flowers are gonna fall and all that good stuff so 
I really like how that turned out. And here I've decided to use a piece of music sheet. And there again, I apologize. I didn't realize I was out of frame. Um, but I'm going to just glue that with the Yoohoo glue stick and stick it right there in the middle. And of course, doing the same thing here, just muting out the, the background there with the music sheets. And going to go in with the, uh, with those. So it'll be addressed and the post office will be happy. And all will be well with the world. And here I just decided that it needed a little something to make the arrow stand out a little bit. So the Stabilo all to the rescue. And we're going to go around it just to make it pop out just a little bit more there. And just like that we have a beautiful envelope. Well Tiffany, we can't really stuff the envelope without it. But that's okay. I'm going to show you how we can, are going to uh, actually uh, sew around it and also use some fun washi tape. And this little guy needs some doodles and it needs a little bit of contrast as well. So just like we did with the other one, I'm going to go in with the Stabilo wall and actually add the little circles around there for a nice little pop of contrast. And using just a paintbrush to activate that with a little water on it. And of course we have to dry it and make sure that it's good to go. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So for this one, I'm going to actually use some white uh, paint. You could use gesso and just put a circle in the middle. That way we can address it and it'll be nice and easy for the post office to see it as well. We want to make sure that we don't put our pen down uh, when the... Uh, acrylic paint sweat because that is a quick way that I have learned that you can totally destroy it. So um, I am going to stitch the edges um, just like I'm showing you here where you stitch around the edges. And for this one, what if you don't have a sewing machine, Tiffany? What do you do? Well, little birdie washi dot itsy.com sent me this fabric washi tape it is absolutely amazing for any project however i thought it was absolutely perfect to put on the envelope so all you do is just like any washi tape you actually Peel it off, it has the adhesive on it, and you stick it down. Simple as that. The great thing is, is that it's actual fabric. Oh, and it gets even better. Uh, Melanie over at little littlebirdiewashi.itsy.com, it'll be linked below, is giving all of the subscribers, okay, are you subscribed? You should be. Giving all the subscribers 25% off of their order. That's right. Don't walk but run. You have 10 days to go and take advantage of this. It's 25% off your total order. And that is littlebirdiewashi.itsy.com. So I hope you make amazing, beautiful mail art. And that you fill them with lots of love. And that you enjoy today's video. Come back and see me soon.